Okay, and now the last step of finding Wally's product is taking the limit. Now, these are the results that I, that I wrote over here, okay? Now, this is the case when the degree is odd, and this is the case when the degree is even. We got these two infinite series. Well, right now they're not infinite because we can specify a value of n, okay? But that's why the limit comes in because Wally's product states that, you know, pi over two is something that is an, is an infinite. You, it's a product that you multiply infinite. So we leave n here first. Later, we're gonna just simply let n tend towards infinity. But what is the limit that we need to use? Well, the limit that we need to use would be this. Okay, that's the ratio of i to n divided by i to n plus 1 is, it is tends towards 1, is n tends towards infinity. Now, I can kind of suspect why he did this because, you see, we've got the pi over 2 on one side, which is down here. So later, you know, if they tend towards 1, we can just bring this over the other side and we can just get the pi over 2 on one side and then get all the numbers on the other side and see what interesting thing we get. So this is our target, okay? Our target is over there. We got this over here and we still need to use the recursive formula in one part. So, now how are we gonna show that? We have some, some quick thinking. Well, what is I n, okay? I n is integrate zero to pi over two of sine n x. So obviously, okay, one way that we, or one way, or the way that we're gonna show is that let's just take it from the sine x to the power of n, okay? Well, because certainly this equals to i n, and i n is over here. We can put in any values of n, okay? And then we really get the one over here. But let's just take it as the sine x function. Now, what do you know about the sine function? Well, okay, for theta from zero to pi over two, okay? What can we say about sine theta? Or let's just say x for the moment, because that's what we're using, okay? What can we say about sine x? Sine x will be between 0 and 1, okay? Now, let's have a think about this. If sine x is between 0 and 1, that means that it's obviously less than 1 and it's more than 0. So what happens if I take the power of that, okay? If I take the power of a number between 0 to 1, would it increase or would it decrease, okay? Well, the answer is that it would decrease, okay? As long as the number that, that is the base is less than 1, it will just decrease because I'm multiplying by like itself, and itself is less than one, so it will decrease. So, given that fact, okay, don't you think I should write something like this? Okay, sine x, okay, but what I'm gonna put here is that I'm gonna put 2n, okay, plus 2, and then similarly, 2n plus 1, and sine 2nx. Now, does this make sense, okay? Sine x, whatever x is, but we know that x is, sine x is constrained between 0 and 1, so it's less than 1. I take a certain power, I guess, okay, it's going to be a certain number, it's going to be small, well, it's only going to be smaller than 1, we know that for sure, okay, unless of course sine x is 1, but let's forget about that. Now, look at this, now this power, okay, is going to be 1 more than this power over here, this power is 2n plus 1, so it's 1 more power than this one over here. So this number, the same base, but I'm just taking it to a higher power, it's obviously going to be less than this, right? Now, if I'm not wrong, the inequality sign up is equal. Okay, it's going to be less than this. And also, this one, I will increase the power again by 1. So 2n plus 1, 2n plus 2 is an increased power of the 1 over here. And this is going to be less than this, and obviously this is uh, more than 0. So this is what we have over here. And I hope now you can see that we're drawing nearer and nearer to proving, or at least to bringing out the integral sign over here, okay? Well, if you want to have a slight graph, okay, but I don't know how to draw it. Pi over 2 is here. Okay, the graph is just simply like, I should think it's like that. Okay, it's just getting less and less when you take the power. So not a problem at all. Now, having this in hand, what I can do now is that I can integrate, okay, sine 2n plus 2x, okay, with respect to x, okay, then I integrate again sine 2n plus 1 dx, sorry, 0, 0, pi divided by 2, pi divided by 2, and it's less than also to integrate 0 to pi over 2 of sine 2 and x. Okay, so there we go. We started with the sine functions. Now we're bringing the integral sine inside because the i, the i n is defined by the integral sine just like we did over here. Not a problem at all. If this is less than this, obviously the area will be less than that area over there. Okay, and now from here we can write i 
2n plus 2 is less than or equal to i 2n plus 1 and is less than or equal to i 2n. Okay, quite neat in fact. Now, we're gonna divide this whole thing. Take a guess. We've got this thing over here. The next step, we want to divide it by, bear in mind that we want to get a 1 somehow, we're gonna divide it by i to the degree of 2n. Okay? Now, dividing that by i degree, so we got i 2n plus 2 divided by i to the degree of 2n is less than or equals to i 2n plus 1 divided by i 2n. Okay? And now this becomes 1. Okay? We are going quite close to there. Okay? Though I must say that there's still a bit of a problem because this is what we want to find. Okay? But it's over there. No doubt about that. Okay? But we, we still got like three separate equations and it's all separated by, by e inequality sign. So this is what we want to show, or this is what we want to show is equal to this, which is over here. Now this is the problem, okay? So how do we solve that problem? Well, we are now going to go back to our integral, or sorry, our recursive formula, which we defined right from the start over there, like so.